I was saying. Any questions? No questions? Suggestions? Objections? We're good? All right. So a quick, uh, a quick uh, explanation of what, like, like a review of what we have done last time. We said that every time a class that wants to get created and instantiated in, the, uh, uh, in our program, that class needs to uh, uh, have some value set up. And to do that, we have two specific types of what I call procedures that you can actually have to make sure you set stuff up and you uh, uh, clean up after the object is gone out of memory. We set the things, the, the procedures in which we put all the initial stuff uh, a class, uh, an object needs to have, a constructor. We mentioned specifically it is not a function. Uh, you cannot call a constructor. If you call a constructor, uh, nothing will be called, but a nameless object will be created because constructor's responsibility is to construct an object. What looks like a function call with respect to constructors, the end result would be creating something. It's not a function call. It will actually create a nameless object, which we do not uh, intend to do. We said a constructor can be called in many different ways. A one argument constructor can be called either with parentheses in front of it or with curly brackets in front of it. So it could be either like this, that's a, a single argument constructor, one argument constructor. A one argument constructor can be called using parentheses, passing the argument to the constructor, uh, curly brackets, uh, the aggregate initialization, or we can use assignment. And we said assignment at the moment of creation is not assignment, but it's a call to a constructor. We said it's initialization. Therefore, it's a call to a constructor. We can call a constructor with two arguments, three arguments, no matter what type of a design we can have. Constructors like functions can be overloaded. The how we create a constructor, the constructors are created by uh, adding something that looks like a function, but it doesn't have a return type. And also the name of the constructor is identical to the name of the class. So when you create a, a, a constructor, uh, it looks like a function, but it carries the name of the class and it doesn't have a return type. The rest is exactly like a function. Not a function, looks like a function. Okay, the destructor, however, has a specific signature, which is a tilde, and then after that, the name of the class, and it never accepts an argument because uh, uh, a destructor's job is to wipe out whatever you made with your constructor, so you don't need to pass anything to it, it just cleans things up. Now, a good example for it was dynamic memory allocation where you want stuff to get initialized and then deallocated at the end. So it was the, because of that we created the employee and inside the employee we created uh, the constructors that actually initialize the object by creating, by if it's no argument, to set everything to zero, to put the class in a safe, empty, recognizable state, invalid state. Uh, and when it's one argument, how we did it, when it's, and so on and so forth. So, so, and I gave you an example not to call a constructor. We said incorrect. This creates a temporary nameless employee that will die right, of, right after it's done. And we went through all the uh, things we mentioned over here. So, um, uh, what else we need to do in here? Yeah, we said that. That's the deallocate thingy, which is fine. I don't think there's anything else to, to cover it, to, to review in here. All right. Okay. So we're good. Any questions about the last lecture? So we can complete it today. One more thing, current object we are going to talk about. And after that, we're going to talk about formatting the input and output, which is a very simple and easy thing. I'll, I'll, um, I'll, go you th I'll take you through it and you'll see. It's going to take a total of approximately 20, 25 minutes. After that, I'm going to help you with your GitHub thingy. 
and uh, others if you have any questions. And then at the end of the class, we're going to have a small quiz. Okay? Pardon me? Oh, did I remove it? Okay, I removed it. Okay. <laughs> uh, anyways. <coughs> okay. So, hello. Good morning. Okay. So, uh, listen, to, I, I have a question. It's a very simple question. Okay, we are in room M12, right? When I came in, what did I ask you today? Uh, I asked, where is our class? And it says 512, right? 512, right? Okay. So now, let's say you are sitting here, and this gentleman asks you, and comes through the door, and comes, sits over here, and asks you, where is the OP244 lab? What would you answer? No. I want you to listen again. We are, you, you're, already, you're already here. So what you say? Yeah. You say, this class. Yeah. This class is 244. You're at the right place, correct? So when you are inside the class, you don't need to mention the room number because they don't understand what the heck you're talking about. M12, what is that? We are in this class. Like, uh, where is the C++ class? This class, right? But if I'm outside of the corridor, not in the class, in the main area, and I ask you, where is OP244? Then you're going to say M12, right? Do we understand this concept? If I am inside the class, I refer to the class I'm in as this class, correct? Yeah. With, when I'm outside of the class in a corridor, to mention, I have to actually give you the name of the, there are several classes. One of, is an M, one of them is M12, which is teaching Three uh, OP two four four. Are we okay with this? Are we okay with this? All right. No, sorry. So I'm gonna give you an example of bad programming, and uh, so I don't want you to do this ever. Okay, it's just an example of bad programming, and and to tell you how we can deal with all the good stuff that we have and, and fix this bad programming of mine. So what is, uh, uh, let's split the window over here into two, into two things and just take a look at this very quickly. What is the name of the attribute that holds the, the name in class employee? M name. M name, right? Yeah. So the name of the thing is mnem, mname, okay? Now, in here, what is the name of the argument that is receiving the name? Uh, receiving the name is employee. Yeah, but what is the name of the argument? Uh, name. Name, pass it through, okay. Right? <laughs> you don't like the microphone, do you? All right, so it is the name. So it's name receiving the, the value Setting the M name that is the attribute, right? What if I'm a crazy nuts person and I call this M name? Then how do I know which one is what? Or I can, can I say which one is what? No. no, I can't, right? I cannot say which one is what. It's crazy. Pardon me? No! System can't say. So what happens is this. Like this is a C thing. It has nothing to do with C++. But when you have a scope, when you have a scope, when we say scope, how do we identify a scope in C language? A scope in C language. Like if you, so an if statement has two scope. A scope when it's true, a scope when it's false. Mm -hmm. How do you identify that? How do you? By yeah, but how do you? What is the syntax of a scope? A scope stops, starts with a curly. curly bracket. So a scope starts with a curly bracket and ends with a curly bracket, correct? It wasn't so difficult, was it? Was it? Yeah. OK. So a scope starts with a curly bracket and ends with a curly bracket. So now if I have a scope inside another scope, we have that, right? You can have an if statement inside a function, right? You can have a loop inside a function. If in the function at the top, you create a variable that's called i, 
And then inside your if statement scope, you create another variable called i. There is no conflict because the scope of the two are different. The problem is that in the inner scope, you cannot see the outer i anymore because the inner i is what we call hiding or shadowing the outer one. So when in here, now my employee in here is the inner scope of my class employee, correct? Right? Although I'm writing it outside, but I did it like this to show that it's inside. So this employee constructor is inside the employee class. If I identify the same name as that one, there is no conflict. Everything's good. The only problem is that you can't see the outside anymore. So the reason that SDR copy is giving you a uh, uh, wiggly thingy is, is not because it's just it's looking at that you're putting both names for the thing. So I'm gonna just gonna remove that. If I do something like this, everything looks beautiful. But the difference is that you have a local variable called M name, and that local variable do its thing. It has nothing to do with the one outside because this M name is hiding the one that is outside. This M name is shadowing the one that is outside. Are we okay down to this point? Now, how can I mench, how can I tell to the compiler, hey, this M name is the argument, but the other one is the one belonging to this class. How do I do that? I can do this. So I'm saying the argument and this, and I keep going like that. Now I know that this name is that one, and the one that doesn't have this is this one. So those people, those people who uh, know Farsi or Arabic or things that you know, it, it writes from right to left. So you have to read the, this like this: M name of this object. <laughs> okay. M name of this object, or in English, this says, so it's apostrophe this, <laughs> this says uh, name, M name. So, so the other way is easier, okay? So that's that, okay? We can do it like this, or um, do you remember what arrow was in structure? When we put an arrow, what does it mean? Uh, Why? Wow, just answer. It was pointer. It means what is this sitting at left side is a pointer, right? So this tells you that this is the address of the current object in memory. It's not the object itself. That's why I put the arrow. To get to to now I have the address to go to the to get to the to get the reference of the object itself. What should I put beside this? When I have a pointer, integer pointer p, equal to address of a, if I want to go from pointer p to the a itself, what do I put beside? Star. Asterisk, star. And we said don't call it star, call it target of. Remember that? You have the microphone? Pass it back, you answered. Okay. <laughs> Okay, so if I want to, if I don't like the arrow, I can actually use the dot, but I need target of this. So I could have, do, I could have done this. There is a problem though. The problem is that dot is like apostrophe. When you do something like that, then it is much more powerful than star. So if you put the dot, it means you are doing, you are writing this, the target of M name, which is a single character. You don't want that. You want to have the target of this. So if you want to do that, you have to do this, saying this object's name. Okay? So if you want, if you don't like the arrow, I love the arrow because I, yeah, because it's less, yeah, it's, it's less typing, right? And it means the same thing. So 
in, I can always say, I, if you want to actually go to the reference, so this with an asterisk beside it is the reference of the current object. This without the asterisk is the address of the current object. What does it mean? The object I am in right now. So if I say in employee A, B, C, when the constructor of A is called, star this is A. When the constructor of B is called, star this is B. When the constructor of C is called, this is C. Do we understand this? Are we okay with this? You're okay with one? No? Okay, so, so what happens over here is this. When I say employee X and I go employee if I do something like this let's do it like that okay so if I do something like this okay now when x with one argument is called, this constructor is called, correct? So when it's coming over here, this constructor is building x, correct? So star this means x. So it's setting the x as m name, correct? Now, employee y is called, is created. The constructor is called for y, correct? So when this is called, star this means y because Y's M name is being created, right? All right, so that's what uh, this means. Are we okay with this? Are we okay? Yeah. All right, now we're gonna do something else now. That's just to show you what this means. Never, ever do this, never, bad practice. Always have different names. Because believe me, you're going to miss one of those this thingies and it's going to ruin your day. Because there's no compiler. You think you are doing, you are setting the M name or whatever of the, of the object, but you're actually setting a local variable and it has nothing to do with that. You're not going to get an error for it. Never use this to qualify what is a member name and what is an argument. If that's the case, immediately rename the argument. And that's one of the reasons we start all the member variables with M underline. Because that's a silly thing. Nobody calls an argument M underline anything. I just did that over there for example. So remember this. Bad practice just to teach this. In a, in a header file, yes. Okay, so th 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 that's idiotic. I'll tell you why. If you are using 500 different things over there, why not using STD? STD is just, oh, that's just an idiotic thing to say. The reason that they want to they say that is that there's going to be a, they may, you may call an, a class something that is already defined in STD. Right? That's the worst case scenario. So for 900 different things that you are using, for 900 different things that you're using from STD, you don't have to type STD scope resolution over and over. For that one thing that you have conflict, you're going to get an error message saying this is ambiguous because I have it in STD and I have it in STDS. So what do I do? I only qualify that one. I don't see any reason behind it. The compiler compiles only once, and then it runs it 5,000 times. So for once, you resolve the problem, and it's done. I do not understand why should any problem even exist. I do not understand. Okay, to me, that's, that's completely unreasonable. Yes, in a header file, you don't do use using. Why? Because if anybody includes your header file, they're going to start using a namespace without knowing. That is called hidden logic. Hidden logic is not good. 
Okay? No problem. This is bad press. Oh, no, no. <laughs> uh, same argument name as member is as member variable, as attribute. Uh, same name argument as attribute name. Is bad practice? I am doing this to teach this. <laughs> okay? That's what I'm doing. All right? So please don't do that. It is just, just for example over here. Now, to teach you another thing about this, I am going to do this, <laughs> which means let's say we didn't have C out. Okay, so I want to create my own C out, an object that prints stuff for me. I'm going to make a very silly one, and it's going to get better as we are going forward. Okay, so um, don't question why you are writing this stupid thing, and rather understand what the syntax is. The stupid thing becomes smarter as we progress through the semester. Okay, so. Let's say I don't have IO stream, I don't have C out. Okay? So if I want to create an object that prints stuff, what do I need to do? First, I'm going to add a class. Okay? So the class, I'm going to call it, let's say, output. Okay? So the class output's job is to do output on the screen. Are we okay with this, everyone? Anybody have a problem with this? Okay. What's the problem? Oh, oh, okay, okay, okay. okay. Remember, I told you this is bad real estate. Don't sit over there. Eek! Let me see. Is it better or worse? Actually, let me bring it over there. How about like this? Is it okay? All right. So yeah, so I'm creating a class called output. When I do that, it just creates the class for me so I don't have to do it. It creates two files. Puts a header file over here, puts a CPP file over here. It says, yes. Is it better now? Is it good now? Did you say make, the, make it bigger? Did I hear you correctly? The, OK. Is it good? You want? No. Is this big enough? I didn't hear that. No, sir. I need to place to type stuff too. You know, I cannot just put two characters over. This is good. Okay. Next time, bring your binoculars. <laughs> but it's okay. I'm joking. All right. So in here, I'm gonna say if not defined. I don't like that pragma once because we don't know what it is yet. SDDS output header file. That's what we do. And I'm going to put define over here. This is what we do. And I'm going to go namespace SDDS, the standard things that we do. And we create our class output. We good? That's our empty header file to start working. And the empty CPP file was to, creating the, creating the, to create the output and uh, write namespace SDDS. All right. Uh, I think I'm getting older. I used to hear students at the back of the class. Now I'm losing my sleep. So my apologies if I can't hear you and I ask you, cool. <laughs> All right, so, so I'm creating the output thingy. And let's actually have this main over here. I'm going to call this the employee main. OK, and I'm going to change that thing so employee is done. And we're going to have prg.cpp. We do not have IO stream anymore. We only have an, an output. Why is it not why is it not giving? It? Oh, because I have two hashtags. That's why. The computer is confused. Okay, so. All right, so that's our output. So what do I want to do? I want to say print integer. Uh, I'm not going to cover everything. First, let's do 
simple things like printing in uh, an integer, double, and a C string. So let's first go with these. Okay, so it's going to only do this. So how do we do that? I'm going to go void print integer i, integer val, value, right? And void print, I can overload it, double value, and that's not void, okay? And this intelligence kills me. Void print uh, constant character pointer uh, C string. Actually, okay. So I have three functions to create. One prints value, the uh, integer. The other one double. The other, the, the other one, the other one C string. So let me create the the body. So that's the first one. That's the second. That's the second one. I'm just creating empty things. This is called prototyping, by the way, when you create empty bodies for your function. So if I compile the code right now, it would work perfectly. I can actually, I can actually come over here and say compile. I can right click over here and do compile, make sure that my syntax is good, and then I'm going to fill in the blanks. You see, no errors. So everything's done properly. Now, how to print the value in here? I don't have IO stream, so I'll go include C it's STDIO. And in here, I'm going to go using namespace std because well, that's where everything is, OK? So I have standard input output that I'm using like C language, OK? So in here, I'm going to say printf percent %d, and I'm going to put the value. Mission accomplished, that is printed, correct? Then in here, I'm going to say printf, printf, uh, percent LF, and I'm going to put the double over here. Uh, value over here. Sorry, the intelligence covers everything. I don't I can't see what I'm typing. <laughs> OK, so and then um, I want to print the constant character string. I, I'm not going to, because if I say over here printf percent S, that's silly, because this is a string itself, correct? So why I don't want to format anything. I'm just going to put over here C string, right? It prints that one. Doesn't make any difference, right? There you go. OK, so the, the, the class is created. Now I'm going to go to my main. Unlike C out, this is not instantiated. I have to instantiate it. So what I'll do over here, and because I did not create, remember I said if you create one constructor, you are responsible for all of them. If you don't create anything, compiler will create a default constructor and a destructor for you. As that, that default constructor doesn't do anything, it's just an empty destructor, but it will, so you can instantiate things. Otherwise, you couldn't instantiate the class, right? So if I don't mention anything, because I don't have any attributes, in future, we're going to add attributes and make it better. But for now, this is just what we have. We have no formatting, it just prints. Are we okay down to this point? Are we okay? All right. So what I'm going to do in here, I'm going to, I'm going to instantiate it in here. So I'm going to go in here and I'm going to say uh, output f out for far dot out. Okay. So that's my object. Now I want to say uh, print f. Oh, sorry. <laughs> f out dot print, and in here I'm going to say uh, welcome to op244 oop now i'm going to say f out print 244 f out the i don't i know it sucks i know but bear with me okay 244 uh, and then i'm going to say over here z a a and in here i'm going to put a space and i'm going to say f out the print uh, uh, six, I'm printing a six, and then in here I'm going to say f out dot print uh, dash September. It's 28th, right? Um, in here I'm going to say f out dot print 28, and then I'm going to say f out dot print new line. Okay, and then I run the program. This beautiful. <laughs> 
program of mine is going to print. Welcome to OP244ZAA6 September. It's actually 7 September. I think we already had a 6. This is 7, right? It's 7. So, so I'm going to put over here 7. Are we okay with this, ladies and gents? This sucks. <laughs> I didn't improve anything. It's like if I, like I have to type for nine hours to do what I did with printf with two seconds. I can improve it a little. Let's see how we can do that. So we just learned that I can refer to the reference of the current object using target of this, correct? So what I'm going to do over here is kind of playing a trick. I'm going to come over here, and I'm going to say instead of void, it's going to print return output puts reference, a reference of the current object. I'm not going to print void anymore. Are we OK with this down to this point? Now I'm going to come back to output.cpp, and I'm going to do the same over here. And in every and each, I'm going to reference, set, return the reference of the current object. So I'm going to say return target of this, return, target of this, and return target of this. Are we okay with this? So when I print the person, the gentleman with the microphone, what does print returns? What does print return? Output. Output? Output address. Output reference. So it returns output reference. Are we all okay with this? So when any of these print statements print, it returns an output reference, right? What, does it, what is a reference in C++? Yeah, address of... Uh, no, no. What is address of... <laughs> what is a reference in C++? Um, a, a, uh, alias. alias. So a reference is an alias, which means this output reference of mine becomes of becomes alias of something. Pass it. Did you already pass it? So this output reference returns what? This. And in my main, it doesn't return this, it returns target of this. Let's say it correctly. Okay? So my question is, when print, for, okay, who does print belong to? F out. Pass it to the back. It, it, it's F out, correct? So when print is returning an output reference that is target of this, in this scenario, print returns reference of whom? F out. It returns the reference of an F out. And we said an alias is something that can re replace something else, correct? So my print itself becomes a reference of F out. Are we okay with this? So instead of writing this, I can actually do this one now. This is called cascading effect. So in here I can bring and put it over here and bring this one and put it over here and bring this one, sorry, put it over here, bring this one, put it over here, bring this one, put it over here and bring this one, put it over here. So I'm saying F1. Print this, print that, print that, print that, print that, back to back in one line. And the action is identical to the other one, no difference. So what happens is that first, when the program is running, it comes over here. The first function is called. So it goes to the one, so it goes to the one that prints a constant character string, and that's welcome to OOP. Then it comes out of this one. It returns the reference of the current one. Therefore, F out and print 244 will be called. So it jumps to the 244, and value becomes 244. Prints that value, 
goes out, now ZAL will be printed. So it goes to the constant character. I didn't have any double over there. If I had a double, the double would have gotten printed. Okay? So this is another reason we need to return this when we want a, a function to represent its owner. Okay? So you can return, and I'm telling you from now on, whenever you have a void function, it's a waste of resource because it doesn't make any difference. If you have a void pointer, don't make it void, even if the workshop tells you. Doesn't matter. If the workshop tells you return void in this member function, don't listen to it. Return the reference of the current object and return this afterwards because it might become handy later on. Makes your life easier. Instead of writing three lines, you can call the method dot, next one is going to get called, and so on and so forth. Are we okay with this? Are we okay down to this point? So what I'm saying is that, for example, so this was the example that I gave you for the, for the output. And I'm going to make this better as we go forward. So next day you are coming in, you're going to see this is going to look better and better as we go through it. Okay? Uh, but for now, leave it as this. And please go home and, and uh, something that I said to the other class um, uh, I'm going to mention it over here, too. Please, 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 before you come to class, review the previous notes. Go through them and see what we've talked about last time. Please do that, please. If you do that, I guarantee an A-plus in this subject. Okay? If you review the code that we have done before and come over here ready, first of all, you have better questions. You know what you're getting into. And when I'm building up the previous knowledge that you have, if you have any problem, you can actually address it. Sometimes you, when you say something, you just don't understand it and you don't know why. That's the biggest problem with the students. When they look at something, they don't understand it. And when I say, say, I, I'm not just getting it. I don't know. Because you, do, you haven't reviewed the last three things that build up to this point. Please. OK? That's how you study for anything, not just this subject. Anything that you have, you review. I talked about curve of forgetting in this class, right? That is real. Go Google it. OK? Anyways, so now I'm going to go back to that employee of mine. Employee had a set function. You see that? The set is returning void, correct? See what I'm going to do. I'm going to make this employee reference. And I'm going to go to set. set. Oh, first of all, let me just do this. mbc.outputtester.cpp. So I'm going to go to the employee.cpp over here very quickly and set this one to employee reference, and at the end, I return this. Don't do that to display, because display has a specific, display has a specific uh, um, signature that I'm going to ask you to follow from now on. Probably not today, but I'm going to tell you. The m methods who print or read the print the object on the console or read the object from the console, they have a specific prototype that you should write that builds up later on to understanding object orientation better. I'll tell you what it is going to be, but remember, for this one, don't return this. Only for display, don't return this. Okay? For any other thing, display and read, print and scan, Input and output, these type of functions don't return this. There is a specific format you need to do. But anyways, so this set thing, yeah, I'm going to bring back the, the last main that we had. So, so this was the employee that we have.
Oh, how many ZAAs? Okay. All right. So I'm going to take this and here I'm going to go. So this print C dot display, we know that there's no problem with this, right? Nothing changed. As you see, I changed the function. It's just return the, the, the set function becomes a new reference of the current object. Now see what I'm going to do over here. I'm going to say C dot set Jane Doe employee number six five yada 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 and uh, and that's the salary. Okay, then I'm going to say C dot display. Are we okay with this? Are we okay with this, people? I just said it. We wrote the function yesterday. But what I did now was set returning the reference of the current object, correct? So I didn't need to do that. All I needed to do was this. Set and display. Oh, not that, this one. Right? So always return void for that matter. Are we okay down to this point? The next thing, let me actually tell you that now that we are at it. What is the standard format uh, of a display function? A display function should always return O stream. And here we have to qualify it because we are not allowed to use. Remember I told you never include a header file inside another header file unless you have to. This is one of the cases. So if I have a display, this should be the prototype of a display. This, is, this should be the signature of a display that you write from now on, unless you've been ordered to do otherwise. Always return an, an O stream reference and receive an O stream reference. Okay? Always. Then inside your set function, the uh, display, you do the same thing. So O stream reference and O stream reference OSDR. And because this OSDR is supposed to be C out, instead of C out, use the OSDR. It's a reference of, of C out. The problem is that and then you, at the end, you return OSDR. That's all. Okay? So I didn't change anything. I just, instead of using C out, that is a reference of OSDR, I am, uh, that is a reference of O stream, I am naming it something different. Okay? Just follow it blindly at the moment. So this, memorize this. This is how you display. This is how you print. This is how you output. This is how you show. If this was read, it would have been iStream and iStream ISDR. Because iStream is the object that uh, CN is built up of. Okay? Are we okay down to this point? Now, problem is that when you do this, in here you cannot call the display because display needs a C out. So I have to actually write over here C out. Right? It, so in here when it's actually running, it go, oh, the other display it needs a C out too. And that's bothering, because you have to keep saying C out, right? First of all, in, this, in here, I have to include IO stream. So let me do that because of this thing over here, because of these two. So uh, in here, uh, where was I? So now in here, if I say C out, it works the exact same way, no difference. So what's going on here? Oh, we have a display over here. So all these things become C out. Now let me fix that. So because I have to keep passing stuff, it becomes annoying. When you want to display, where you want to display it on? C out, right? When you don't want to say anything, it wants to be C out on the console, correct? So instead of this gibberish of keep typing C out, I'm going to go over here and add a default value for the argument. We know how to do it. I'm going to say equals to STD C out. Done. So if I don't mention anything, use C out. If I want to print it somewhere else, I'll do so. 
Okay, now that I have done this, display is returning reference of O stream. As a definition, display becomes a new name for C out. Display can be used as C out. So now what I can do, I'll come over here and first of all, let me clean up those C outs that I kept typing over here. I don't need to. So when I actually come over here and I run it, it works perfectly. It just comes in here. It goes to display. So nothing is different in my code other than it comes over here. And now O stream is actually C out. And when I print on O stream, it is actually printing on C out. Right? Okay. Now what's good about it? First of all, I don't have to return to new line because in what if I want to show the employee information halfway in a sentence? I want to say this person is hired. How can I do that? It always goes to new line. I hate that. I don't want that. So what do I do? I remove the end L over here and remove the end L over here. So my print will not go to new line. But no sweat. If I want to go to new line, I can simply say and L. Because display is C out. It is returning C out. Also, in here, I can do this. So now I can have my my information halfway through a statement with no problem. So I can actually say, print that and go to new line if I want to, like creating Fred Soleil, yada, yada. Oh, I didn't go to new line over there. The displays that I have over here, I have some displays, so display. I don't know why am I displaying in a constructor. But anyways, and L. Do I have more? Oh, yeah, these are debugging stuff. Oh, we can remove that later on. I think we're going to be fine now. Yeah. So there you go. So as you see now, uh, it actually shows the thing and goes to new line. Or I can say Jane Do Yara Yara is higher. So I can print something after. I don't have to go to new line. So it gives me more options. OK? Are we OK down to this point? Now I'm going to show you something freaky, and I'm going to wipe it out. I don't, want to, I, do, I don't want you to learn this, but I just want you to understand what's going on here. Yes? You guys have very soft and delicate voice. I have to come close. Go ahead. Tilde? That means it's a destructor. That's the name of a destructor. A name of a destructor by standard starts from tilde. That tells the compiler this procedure has to be running when the object is dying. So we put the constructor, this class has name. So that's the standard name for a constructor. The standard name for a destructor is tilde, name of the class. No problem. OK, so yes. Killing Jane Doe. Because we changed it. We set it to something new. <laughs> it was Fred Soleil, then we set it to Jane Doe. <laughs> we changed it halfway through. OK, so please take a look at this. I just want to show you something interesting. Look at this. I'm going to say include F stream. OK? In here, I'm going to say F I, oh, sorry, O F stream. Hired.txt. And I'm going to call it file. Now, in this display, I'm going to put file. So, what happened? Because I'm passing something, it replaces C out, right? But F stream, OF stream, is a child of O stream. It's like, I am Soleil Mandu because of my father. So you can call me Mr. Solimandu, although my father was Mr. Solimandu. 
so you can call me as my father was called, correct? It's the same thing over here. I passed I stream, I can pass O F stream. Don't ask why, we're going to learn it three weeks from now. But now, line number 11 is going to get printed on a file with no change whatsoever. If I just compile and run this, see what happens. You see it's not printed on a screen? Take a look. Ta-da! That's the beauty of object orientation. When you do things properly, you can reuse your stuff and apply polymorphism to the extent of oh mama, okay? <laughs> Just, I'm going to remove it. Just telling you the reason I'm asking you to follow that for now so we understand later how it works was this. Now I'm going to remove it. Only with one line of code I did that. I made my display not only print on a screen but also in a file. If you do your stuff properly. Okay? So please look at the display and later when we are asking you to create a function that shows something on a screen, a function that prints something on a screen, the function that displays something on a screen, try to have the, uh, the signature of a function written in that way and um, unless they ask you otherwise. That is that about this and all the good stuff that we talked about on display. Now I'm going to quickly teach you about how to format your code. It's a very format your uh, output. You can go, uh, just going to give you an example for it. It's very simple. Then go through the notes and learn it from there better, okay? So, so this is the employee main with this and display. CPP. When you are printing something, you print with C out. Therefore, you can tell to C out how to print something next. So, I have over here integer i as 1, 2, 3. I have uh, double d as 1, 2, 3, 0. 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. And I have constant, uh, not constant, a character c string that is uh, uh, hello, the, or hello, something like that. Okay, so I have three different things. We know we can print this with C out, no problem. I can go C out I, C out D, and C out C string, right? And when I run this beautiful program of mine, those three things are printed. Are we okay with this? But look, it rounded the thing halfway through. I don't want that. I want two digits after the decimal point because it's money. Whatever. Or one digit after the decimal point because it's GPA. So I want to change that. Also, I want to print this different type of width. I want to make it left justified, right justified. I want to fill the spaces with dots. How do I do all these? Very simple. First of all, you want to print in a specific width. This is how you do it. You will see out dot width. Say in 20 spaces. Okay? Now, but remember, width only affects the next printout and not after. So it prints the I, not end out. Which means if I put an asterisk over here, it puts I in 20 spaces, not asterisk. Only the next print. Okay? Now I can put something before to check. So in here I'm going to say C out asterisk. Now that I123 is going to get printed in 20 spaces. Look. Are we okay? Now, C has a mind of its own to format the doubles any way that it wants. You can tell it to shut up. 
and have a fixed format. I want only to be the way I tell you. What do you do? You set the formatting, set the flag, formatting, whatever you call, to be fixed. So you say C out, and this is as long as your program runs. Set F, iOS, fixed. These are all constant values in iOS class, mother of all input-output stuff in iOS system. I'm saying everything should be fixed. Now if you run it, it's fixed. It's never going to change. Okay? And as you see, it shows everything. Now you want the precision to be only two digits after the decimal point? No problem. So this is for the duration of execution, not only for next print. But this is only for next print. Are we okay down to this point? Now for precision, what do I do? I'm going to say C out dot precision 2. Whoa! So I only want two digits after the decimal point and done. You see? And it rounds it properly. If it's 4, 5, 6, 6, you know, 5 becomes 6. It's rounding. You know that, right? And the exact same thing happens. So if I want to print the other ones in a, in a certain width, I can do that. And if I, let's say I want to fill with, and I want to fill the spaces with, uh, um, let me actually add this thing to this one too. So I'm going to put over here for the, for the double one, for example. It's the same thing for all of them. No difference. So now, after doing this, and this happens for all, so again, this is for the duration. I can say C out dot fill and say dot. It means any place you are filling spaces extra that I didn't tell you, put dot instead. So now if I run it, all the spaces that I have will be filled with dots. Are we okay down to this point? And it's the exact same thing for uh, the, the C string. Okay? Now, so this is with uh, fixed and precision. Right? Now, We know how the formatting is done with all of them, so I'm not going to have five different things printed. Now I want to focus on left justification and right justification to see how it's done. Okay? So now I'm going to have the width, so I'm going to have only that integer thingy over there. Precision is not needed because I'm printing an integer, and it's filling it with zero, so that's what it is. I have one. So if I do it right now, you will see that it's one, two, three, right? Are we okay with this? All right. Now I want it to be right, left justified. What do I do? And let me take the dots out too. We know that's going to be done with, eh, let it be, it doesn't matter. So now I want to be left justified. I go C out dot uh, set F iOS left. That means I want it to be left justified. But that's for the duration of the program, which means if I have several one of these, they're all going to be left justified. If I want the next one to go to right, I have to set it to go to right. So let me do this. I just want it to be separate so we know. So now this is left. Now for this one, I'm going to go right. So I'm going to say C out dot uh, set F iOS right. And I run the program. It's right justified. All of them. Now I want to go back to left. The reason that I'm going left, right, left, right to show you an exception. It didn't work. So 
you go left, you go right, again you want to go left, it doesn't work. Okay? Because of that, always try to clear what you set after you're done with it, if you don't need it anymore, to bring back C out to normal state. So after you do the left justification, always unset it. You do right justification, unset it. Because that, that's how they designed it, sadly. So the funny thing is that after right, you can't do left. But after left, you can't do right. Why? Don't ask me. That's the way it is. That's why we have unset F. When you, there, let me not explain it. OK. Because I have to tell you about bit patterns and stuff. We don't want to go. OK. But please, unset it, and you're fine. So in here, again, unset. And everything goes back to normal. So now if you run it, left and right actually works properly. You see? Left, right, left, right, left, right. Are we OK? So that's that. That's formatting. Done. <laughs> Finished. That's all you need to do, all your formatting. There's no, uh, and don't think about, oh my god, this is much more difficult. Over there, we added the dash. It became left justified, and we didn't. But the thing is that you design this one in an object, and then you tell to object to print itself. Object will do it every single time. You don't need to worry about it. You design it once, and you forget about it. Okay? You don't need to do anything with it. So that's object orientation. So this one is E, C out. Oh, so this one is C out. And C out uh, left and right. OK, so that's that. Next thing is C in. First of all, with C in, with C in, Seen is an extreme is an extremely shy thing. Remember that, and see out too. If they fail, they will not work anymore. Okay. So if you get one thing and you don't give it proper information, it's not going to work. Okay. So when you have C in, Say in an integer, I'm going to enter an i. So in here, I'm going to say c out i. And I want to read the i. If I do this thing, so let's do j and k over here too. j and k. That's j. And K. So if I do something like this, and in here I'm going to go C out I. J and K. If I do something like this, I'm going to start getting uh, information. So I'm going to put over here 10, 20, 30, and it, ent and it gets everything, right? But take a look. If I run it, and in here I say 10, it can read that, right? It's not integer. It's not going to do anything else. It fails, and it says, I'm not going to talk to you anymore until you apologize. You can do that. You can apologize, actually. Okay, so what I can do over here, I will come to that later, that's uh, uh, fail. So in here, I'm going to say if c in dot fail, okay, that means I entered something wrong. Now I can say c out c out bad int. Okay? And then I have to say C in, I apologize. C in clear, it means I'm really sorry. 
Excuse me. Now you, have, now you have lots of garbage in memory, right? You have to say ignore all the garbage up to and including a backslash n. So we're going to say cn ignore, say 10,000 characters and backslash n. Nobody enters that many numbers, right? Whichever comes first, it's going to stop. Yes. Pardon me? Mm. They're inside CN. They, you see the dot? What does it mean? What does it mean? Apostrophe S. CNs ignore. CNs clear. CNs, right? So they are inside CN. You are telling to CN to ignore. Okay, it's getting too much. We'll talk about this the next day you're coming in. Let's stop right here. Are we okay? So we do C in, C out, easy. You don't need to do anything. Okay, C out, easy. C in, we'll talk about later. Qualifying and taking care of the stuff. Uh, foolproof data entry. Okay? Forget about this. We'll talk about it later. Pardon me? Oh, no. You don't need to. Workshop 4, right? No, you don't need it. You don't need it for Workshop 4. For Workshop 4, you need to format. Workshop 3? Is it 3 coming up? It's 3 now. 3 doesn't have any formatting in it. It doesn't. I'm, talk I'm talking about Workshop 4. Okay. <laughs> okay, 3, I know it doesn't have anything. But Workshop 4 may have it, actually. You have a class on... Monday, so you're going to know about it. Yeah. OK? All right. And it's next lab, right? So you're good. So we'll talk about this later. So the way you go, <sighs> this is all, I have to <laughs> stop. OK. Uh, we'll stop. We'll talk about the rest later. So this is the end of the class. Let me just stop this right now.